is he's our king. He's our Lord. He's our father. He's our savior. Let's worship him this morning because he's the reason why we're here. It's by his grace. It is by his mercy. It's not by anything that we've done. Let's worship him. Jesus came and he laid down his life so that we can be here today, so that we can know who God is. Let's worship him. Let's worship him because there's no one who is like him. Let's worship him. God of 
O Jehová is your name. You are the mighty one. Yes, you are. Jehovah. Matthew 3, 16, after Jesus was baptized, he came up immediately out of the water, and behold, the heavens were opened. Somebody said the heavens were opened. Say it very well. Your heavens are opened. And John saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. Hallelujah. Our heavens are open in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to declare open heavens of his grace. 
Let's begin to pray this morning. Open heavens of his mercy in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. The open heavens of favor, the open heavens of blessing, the open heavens of your grace. The Bible said the heavens were opened. Father, we pray this morning in the name of Jesus. As we began this service today, open heavens in the name of Jesus. Open heavens of anointing. Open heavens of fresh oil in the name of Jesus. Open heavens. Open heavens of his presence in the name of Jesus. Absolute presence in the name of Jesus. Doing wonders in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Open heavens. Open heavens. Open heavens in all that you do. In your request, in your secret request, in the service, in the church of God, in the name of Jesus, open heavens of his grace, open heavens of his mercy. I want you to pray very well. You are not praying. You have to open up. Open heavens of his grace, open heavens of his mercy. Open heavens in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for open heavens. As heaven was open, when Jesus was baptized, he is the head of the church. And because heaven was open for the head of the church, the heaven is open for us. In the name of Jesus, where you have been experiencing difficulties, there's an open heavens today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open heavens in the name of Jesus. No more difficulties. No more hindrances. In the name of Jesus. No more hindrances. There's manifestation of open heavens. In the name of Jesus. Manifestation of open heavens. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, the heavens were opened. Say to yourself, my heavens are opened. My heavens are opened. My heavens are opened. In the name of Jesus. Our heavens are open in the name of Jesus. Our heavens are open in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's sing this song as we round up. Angels are singing. You are worthy. They are singing. Angels are singing. mighty name of Jesus. Take it the way it is written in the scripture. Our heavens are opened in the name of Jesus. I say the heavens of grace are opened. The heavens of mercy are opened. The heavens of favor are opened. The heavens of blessings are opened. In the name of Jesus, it is permanent. The testimonies are permanent. Nobody can take it away. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Children of the living God, praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all welcome to another glorious day that the Lord has made and indeed we we'll rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Our hymn today is Jesus Loves Even Me. As we sing this song, I really want us to don't just sing with but don't just sing to sing. I want you to sing. I really understand the words that you are saying. Your father in heaven, the one that came down to the earth, he died for you. He loves you. 
And I pray that indeed as you sing this song, this not only this song will plant seeds in your heart, but it will minister to you in any way that you need it to in the mighty name of Jesus. Joy shall be full in the name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Angels bow before 
circumstances. Daddy, we just here to say thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love, for not failing your promises. Severally, you tell us, you say unto you, your word that you will help us. And Daddy, we are here today, Lord, to receive help of you. Father, please help us. We cannot help ourselves. Help us, Lord. You are the help of the helpless. If you don't help us, we are finished. We will become prey in the hands of the devil. Lord, please, in your mercy, help us. Help us. Help us in that area of our lives. In that area of our life, concerning our children, concerning our marriages, concerning our spiritual life, help us. We need that help. We need that help. That's why we are here. Daddy, Lord, please open the heavens for us and pour upon us, O Lord, the blessings, O oh Lord, that will be beyond us in the name of Jesus and give us the strength, O oh Lord, to carry it. That we will not be tired, we will not be weary. Your word we are going to hear today, Father, let it be a blessing to our soul. Let it bring healing, let it bring deliverance. Let our joy be full in the name of Jesus. Every restriction, every distraction, every attention that wants to take us away from us, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Your children are on you, O Lord, today. Daddy, visit us. Collectively and individually. Meet us at the point of our knees. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Good morning, all you are welcome to church. Lord bless you. Is well with you all. Hallelujah. I want to especially welcome each and every one of us. And I believe that today the Lord will do something extraordinary in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Can you say to your neighbor, neighbor, you are welcome? I'm sure many of us are supposed to, to have stayed longer than this, right? Maybe so. But that one now, oh Lord, have mercy. It is well. And thank God the, the winter is going away gradually. Eh? It's going now. Is summer not coming? Summer is around the corner. You say? Eh? It, uh, it's going now. After this week. Uh -huh. We can now relax. To God be the glory. All right. Our scripture is in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The same scripture we used last week by the grace of God. We want to continue in that series. And if you remember, we were talking about the unstoppable. Destroying what? Paralysis. Destroying paralysis. And one thing we said is this. What is paralysis? We defined it. As uh, whatever it is that that makes us to that did not allow us to take action, inability to take action, inability to move forward, and this we saw that it could be a, it could it could apply to any part of our lives, spiritually, maritally, emotionally, pensioning. 
That's what paralysis is all about. Anything that will not allow you to progress in life. Anything that seems to be holding you down. Hallelujah. But one thing we are made to understand, if we look at the effects last week, what, are, what, can it, what, what is the effect on us? What can it do for us? And one of the things we mentioned that make us to be unable to move. Also, we said that uh, because of that, we become incapacitated. We are helpless. We are helpless. There is nothing we can do. It makes us to be dependent. And we could see the story of people. We must have had it here and there. People become dependent on others. They cannot take any action of their own. They cannot take any step forward on their own. But today, uh, last week we did conclude that we said there is answer. There's a solution available. And that's what we want to quickly look at today by the grace of God. What are the steps that we can take to destroy paralysis? What are the steps that we can take? What are the things that we can do? What are the things? In that Mark chapter 2 that we read, we saw it there that Jesus was said to have arrived in, in Capernaum. And after some days, people heard he was around. And so suddenly they brought a man. A man who was paralyzed. A man who could not make it there himself. A man who had to be carried by four people. A man, even when they brought it to where Jesus was, they could not have access to where he was, right? And what did they have to do? They have to go and break the rule. Those men did not neglect him there. That is the helper of God's destiny. And I pray for somebody this morning. That helper of destiny you are waiting for will connect with you in the name of Jesus. I say will connect with you in the name of Jesus. So what are the steps that we need to take? destroy this paralysis? What are the steps that we need to take to overcome this paralysis? What are the steps that, what are the things that we need to do so that this paralysis can become a thing of, of, in our lives? Number one, there must be the awareness. What did I say? Awareness. And that requires us opening our ears. Opening our hearts. Amen? In the case of this man, when we look at the book of Mark, that Mark chapter, I think chapter 10 there about, the Bible talks about that this man called Bartimaeus, a blind beggar. Bartimaeus could not see Jesus, right? But one thing about him was his ears were, eh? and his heart were also open to receive. Praise God. And that was why he could hear when Jesus was passing. And immediately he heard. What did he do? He began to shout. He began to scream. He began to call for help. Jesus, son of David, do what? Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, brethren. When you want paralysis to become a thing of the past, call paralysis anything you may want. Define it by any other adjective. It could be your failure. It could be whatever has been denying you of your glory. It could be the challenge you are facing in your marriage. It could be the challenge you are facing in your academic. It could be the challenge you are facing in your career or your business. Whatever it is, brethren, define it by that. And you will be right. But in your heart, and he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus had at that point. Have. And what did he do? Jesus called him. Despite the fact that people were telling him to shut up. Despite the fact they were telling him, nobody, I mean, he's not looking for you. You, you cannot see. How can he attend to you when many people are here? But he did not stop. Brethren, you need to be aware of what you are going through so that you can get an answer to it. There are many of us who are going through situations in our lives that we cannot even define. We can't describe it. And when you are asked what is happening, you say you don't know. Right? You don't know. But today, I am believing God that the Lord will give you the solution to that problem in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will give you the solution. But he may receive solution to his problem. Hallelujah. He received solution to that problem. And that solution became, became a thing of the past. Would you pray this prayer and tell the Lord this morning, I said, Father, every report and need that I need to hear to overcome this paralysis, give it to me, Lord. I need it. Give it to me. Every report 
Bartimeo had a report about Jesus. He had heard about him. And when he was passing, he heard. And he cried out. Ask the Lord to give it to you. That behavior and attitude. That have shut down your ability to see. That have shut down your ability to be active. That have shut down your ability to be able to move forward. Ask the Lord to remove them today. Ask the Lord to remove them. Ask the Lord to remove them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every opportunity that can destroy that paralysis. In the life of a man. Ah, my father, my God. And make him unstoppable. And make him to begin to move forward. And make him to become a champion. Ask the Lord to give to you. Ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him. Ask him tonight, uh, this morning. Ask him. In the name of Jesus. That darkness that is holding you down. That power that is holding you down. Ask the Lord to overcome them for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Number two. Thing that you need to do to overcome paralysis. The crowd does not matter. Because you need to understand that what you are going through, there are other people or millions of people that are also going through. Right? So you won't just wait on the spot. You have to make step or take a step. Take a step to move forward. When Bartimaeus cried unto him, what did they tell him? Shut up. Did he shut up? Did he shut up? The Bible said the more they asked him to shut up, the more he did what? He cried out to Jesus. And it's at that point that God will hear your cry. And he will say, my son, come forth. Praise God. Don't allow the crowd to be the determinant of your, of, of your destiny. Don't allow the crowd. It does not matter the crowd. The Bible said they were gathered, Matthew 2, so that there was no more room, even at the door. When they brought that man who was paralyzed to Jesus and there was no, 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 no way to, for them to go, they did not say because there was no way. They made effort. Many of us, we have made effort in the past, but it only means that that effort you have made is not enough. Make more effort. Take a little, a little step further. Tell your neighbor, take a little step more. Praise God. Praise God. In Mark 5.25, we saw the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, as many as the crowd were, she did not allow that to hold her back. She was determined in her mind. And she declared, if only, has that been your situation? Have you got to that point in your life? You were, you are, you are going to declare, say, if only I can just touch the end of his garment. If only. That meeting was her last resort. That was the opportunity to accomplish that goal. That goal you have said before you, and there seem to have been challenges over here. I pray for you this morning. Receive the power and the grace to overcome that challenge in the name of Jesus. The crowd will have been an obstacle, but she did not allow. Neither did Bartimaeus allow the crowd. They almost distracted him, but she, he did not allow. He pushed further. He pushed further and he got his answer. You will get your answer. I said, the answer to your prayer, God will grant unto you. It does not matter how many may have gathered and given the impression that you have no chance. God will arise for you. God will arise for you. For you. He will cause your eyes to be focused on him in the mighty name of Jesus. And every crowd factor, every crowd suggestion that we have been given, does not allow you to see him. That's not allowing you to see clearly. God will take them away from you. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Very quickly. We need to also understand that the door is not only the way. The door is not only the way. What, what does that mean? These people got to the door. And everywhere was crowded. Amen. Everywhere was crowded. There was no way. Jesus was this time. That thing you are looking for is just in front of you. But there is a God. Or there is a deep gutter. There is a deep hole. Must that be the only way? Look for an alternative. For what? An alternative. When these four men got there with the paralyzed man, 
They did not say because there was no other alternative. They did not say because there was other entrance. They did not say because of the crowd they were going to take the man back. They have two options, right? They could have left the man there. Go their own way. Sure. Right? They could also have taken him back to where they were bringing him from. But they did not do that. They searched for other options. So the door is not the only way, brother. It's not the only way. Abraham was sure that God was going to provide at the point in time when he was going to sacrifice his only begotten son. His, his loving son. You remember on their way, the Lord was asking. I mean, the son was asking, Father, you said we are going to make a sacrifice unto God. Of course, the boy knows what and what he can taste to do. To offer sacrifice. Is that not so? We have the knife. We have the wood. We have the fire. We have everything. Where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham answered, the Lord will do what? We provide. And the Lord did provide. Brethren, you need your faith to be strong in the Lord. You need what? Your faith to be strong. In the midst of that challenge you are facing, let your faith be strong. In the midst of that challenge, in the midst of that opposition, let your faith be strong. Be sure that there is always a way out. Except God has not said it, that faith will not come. But once God says it, it certainly and surely will come to pass. Genesis 20, 28. Abraham said, my son, God will surely provide every land. And the Lord did provide. What is that need of your life? What is that area of your life? What is that need? Raise up your right hand. Please, raise up your right hand. What is that need of your life that you have been crying to God for? I call upon heaven this day to release in the name of Jesus. I said that which you have been calling God for. Father, our heavens are open. Let there be a release unto us today, right now, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. What is that need? And the God indeed provided. They never lied. The man was not put to shame. Imagine how that boy would have felt at that age when the father told him the Lord will surely provide. They did not leave the house with any ram, not even chicken, not even rats. <laughs> Praise God. They did not leave the house with anything, but they, about it. they packed everything they needed. And the father said the Lord will provide. I'm sure when they got there, and the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, look, there is a ram there that is stuck. Go and take it. That boy will be wondering. Uh -uh. How, did he, how did he get there? That's faith. I pray the Lord will increase your faith. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Above every alternative, God will increase your faith. I say above every alternative, God will increase your faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. And from every of your... Every of your challenge, every of that trouble, Lord will give you rest in Jesus' name. I say, we'll give you rest in the name of Jesus. Number four, very quickly, your current status does not define your tomorrow. You understand what I'm saying? Your current situation does not determine your tomorrow. You may not have today. Oh, come on, somebody. I say, you may not have today. It doesn't mean you are not going to have tomorrow. And when we look at the situation of people in this country, many people came in, nobody, they didn't know anybody, came in as a refugee. And when you came in as a refugee, 50 50 times, you either accepted or what? You are sent back. Now, those who were refugees, they call them then. Are they still refugees today? Eh? 
Hallelujah. We have living testimonies in the house. So the fact that you went that situation yesterday, your son is going to remain like that. I see the Lord changing your status. Delay is not denier. Except God is not on the throne. And except you are not faithful with God. But to them who are faithful with God, God is ever faithful. That he cannot deny himself. What is your story today? <laughs> you may not have had any story to tell now. But I stand on this altar to, de to declare to you. You will tell your story. And that story will be a good one in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are today does not define who you will be tomorrow. Even though you may have been settled today, but there is still a greater plan God has for you. There is still a greater plan God has for you. And I know something for sure. Nothing will be able to stop you or hold you back. You are getting there. You are getting there. Oh, I say you are getting there. That man that was brought to Jesus paralyzed. The friends made every effort. And they took him through the ceiling. Imagine the effort they will have. Oh my God. May God bless those people. The effort they will have made. Carrying this man from the branch. Putting him on the roof. And then removing the roof. Then dropping. Uh -uh. Excuse me. Even if you are a contractor, you will charge. Don't be so. And by the time that Jesus was finished with that man, he came to Jesus a paralyzed man. But he walked that wall, a man with full legs. Ah, your story will change as the Lord God live it. You may have been struggling today. But I see that struggle coming over in your life. People may have spoken ill of you today. But listen to me. For they who have spoken ill of you before now, they are coming to celebrate you. Hallelujah. Your status today does not define your tomorrow. Not at all. It doesn't define your tomorrow. David said in Psalm 142, if you can give us that, we'll look at it. Psalm 142. I'll read from verse 3. He said, Well, my spirit faints me. Know my way. In the power where I walk, they have a hidden trap for me. Look to the right. See, there is none who takes notice of me. You see that? When you are going through that situation, nobody sees you. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. Give us what five. Let's see what he say. Then I pray. What did he do? Then I pray to you, Lord. I said, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in my life. I love this translation. Give us what six. We are going to seven. Hear my cry for I'm very low. Rescue me from my past good talk, For they are too strong for me. Verse 7. Bring me up of prison so I can thank you. The godly will crowd around me. And you are good to me. That's the cry you need. And God will hearken to you. And God will change your situation. That's what we need. That's what we need. When you have this, you have hope. When you have this, God himself encourages you so that your tomorrow will be alright. Irrespective of what you are going through, you will become victorious. Declare to yourself, I'm a winner. It does not matter what I'm going through now. I will win. I will win. A battle before me, I will win. In the name of Jesus. He is our refuge. He is our protector. He is all that we want in life. He will intervene in that situation. And it will cause paralysis to be by your life. In the name of Jesus. Number five, very quickly. What we need is divine helper. 
divine helper for us to overcome the paralysis in our life. This paralyzed man find helper who were able to bring him to Jesus. And we saw the story. Where is it that you need help? You saw when we were doing the opening prayer, we were asking God to help us. I need help. I don't know about you. Is there anyone that does not need help? Is there anyone? Oh. Eh? Mr. Rose. <laughs> He's our helper. And when God helps you, you are settled. Men may help you. And they get halfway and ignore you or neglect you. What do you think will have happened to this man that was far alive? When they were trying to lift him up into the ceiling and suddenly there was a disagreement between the four of them that were carrying, what would happen? Sir, Pastor Mosul, what would have happened? Eh? Somebody help me. The bishop would be about, and they have already lifted him and there was agreement. Huh? <laughs> you see this is that. Can you imagine that halfway? Ah, I pray for you today. Your help will not be halfway in the name of Jesus. That's what man can do for you. But when God helps you, it's complete. You need divine helper. You need divine helper. And you need to understand that help is a promise. Help is what? It's a promise. And that's a promise God made for us. Concerning the situation of our lives. Concerning the circumstances that surround us. In Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Let me start from verse 13 there about. Isaiah 41. He was there. Isaiah 41. That's what he says. Anybody if you are there, can you read for us? 41. I think 13 there about. I, the Lord your God. Uh -huh. I am the Lord who says to you, don't be a, hold on sir. What is the situation of your life? God is saying to you what? Do not be afraid. What will he do? I, I mean, imagine God himself saying to you, I will help you. If I were to tell you, I will help you. <laughs> you <look. laughs> There's a saying that somebody that will give a uh, clothes to a lazy man. What will you do? I did, you are not doing that talk. I didn't say that. You don't help me. So, no. <laughs> Imagine that. You first and go look at, have I helped myself? Even me that needs help. How can I help you? But God here is saying, I will do what? Help you. May God help you concerning that situation of your life. Let's look at the next one quickly. 14, right? What? Do not fear. Uh, hold on, sir. That situation you are going through is nothing before God. God is saying to you, don't fear. Don't be afraid. Don't allow fear to overwhelm you. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. I will help you. Hallelujah. Oh, my so He said, I will help you. Out of that marriage, God will help you. Out of that, your career, God will help you. Concerning that, your health situation, God will help you. Concerning that immigration issue, God will help you. In the name of Jesus. Man cannot help you. Take note of that. Even if they help you, they will hold on to you. They will belabor you. Even if they help you. What do you think was the story between Jacob and Laban? Yes, Laban was helping Jacob now, right? He was helping him. That's why he allowed it. But he saw how God was blessing him. And he wanted to hold on to that. Is there any help any man has rendered to you? 
and they are holding on to you as if they own you. <laughs> From now on, every hand they have been using to hold you, we command such and paralyze in the name of Jesus. You are let loose. You are let loose. You are let loose into your freedom. You are let loose into your freedom. You are let loose into your freedom. In the name of Jesus. Nothing is allowed to hold you back. Nothing. 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 God alone is the one that will not disappoint you. And he will grant you that boldness to ask for help. And you will receive that help in the name of Jesus. From today, you enter into the covenant of hell with the God who is your maker. In the name of Jesus. Why don't you declare this to yourself? Say, Father, from now on, for the rest of my life, I, your name, I, mention my name, my name, mention my name. Oh, come on, mention my name. I, I definitely, I definitely, I know. I will not lack help. I will not lack help. I will not lack help. Never again. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Number six, very quickly, we have one more after day. Direction is more important than speed. Direction is more important than what? Than speed. Psalm 25 that we read during the workers' meeting. Can you give us that from verse 8? Psalm 25. Remember God said he is the one that will do what? He will guide us. Is it 2 and 3 that we read? Sorry, go back. Go to 2 and 3. He said when we humble ourselves, when we surrender 25, not 35. When we surrender ourselves, when we make ourselves teachable, what will he do? He will guide us. He will do what? He will guide us. He will lead us in the right way to go. You may have the wisdom, you may have the ability. You may have the capability. If you are not guided, you will still lose it. Praise God. You may have the speed. But when you don't have the direction, what happens? You will not achieve anything. A car may be able, may be faster. There are some fast cars. Right? Right? What are the fast cars? One? Eh? Lamborghini? Eh? I didn't hear that, though. Bugatti. Okay? One more. Let's mention one more. Ferrari. Okay, let's, let's take that three, for example. You now put these three to go on a thousand kilometers. Or there are even some cars now that says they are selfless, uh, driverless, right? They're the Tesla. Okay. Tesla is fast, no doubt about it. But do you know that if that car is not guided, what will happen? What will happen? It may have speed, but it doesn't have direction. It will lose it. Direction is being guided. No matter how smart you are, if you don't have a focus of where you are going, you won't know where you are going. And you will not be able to achieve anything. Did you get that? Brethren? So for you to overcome paralysis, you must have direction. What is that direction? What is your expectation? What is your goal? What is your goal? I think in Second Chronicles 9 verse between that place. The story of this man that the mother born uh, with pains. What's his name? Jabez. He realized who he was. The paralysis you are going through, you know what it is. You know the challenge it is. And so Jabez realized that what did he do? He cried out. He had the goal. That means that he cannot continue to carry bees. And he cried unto God. And God had him. God did not only hear you. God answered him. Today, concerning that issue of your life, God will hear you. And he will answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of our time, finally, let's look at what this one says. There is always a way. It does not matter what happens. 
say to somebody, there is a way. There is a way. There is a way. In verse Mark 2, 4, the Bible says, when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. They removed the roof above him. There is a way. And I pray for you that God will make a way for you. Out of that, your situation, God will make a way for you. The children of Israel got to the Red Sea. They looked and looked and looked. There was nothing they could do. All hope was lost. To the right, to the left, there is no way of escape. The only option left for them was to turn back into slavery. But when they cried out to God, God saw them. And the Lord, in his mercy, because of the loving kindness he has for us, he made the way of escape for them. Out of that situation, God will make a way of escape for you. I say God will make a way of escape for you. You will cry no more. You will weep no more. You will sorrow no more. You will suffer no more. You will fall no more in the mighty name of Jesus. God will make it for you. That blockage will be removed. Everything that is blocking you from assessing that greatness, from assessing that joy, the Lord will remove them in the name of Jesus. The Lord will remove them in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will remove them in the name of Jesus. And when, when, when you are supposed to overcome, and you do, you do not, and you cannot see the way, God will send helpers to you. The helpers that will hold you by, right, by your right hand and guide you through, the Lord will send unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Distraction can also be a thing that will hold you back. So you need to look for a way. Don't allow anything to distract you. Let your focus be on God and on God alone. That's the final one. Your focus should be on who? On God. Don't be shaking. Even if you are expecting it has not come, trust in him. Hold on to him. Believe in him. Amen. And he will do it for you. He will remember your petition. And it will cause your joy to be full. It is well with you. Shall bow down and to pray. Go before your maker this morning. And tell him, Father, you are the only one that can make a way. Do we know this song? Choir, if you can help us. God will make a way where it seems. We cannot see He will make, make a way for me. He, he will be my God. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way Take it one more time. God make a way. While you are singing that song, also be crying to God. That say, Father, make a way for you, Lord. Out of this situation, out of this situation, you are my help. You are my help. You are the only one that can help me. Father, make a way. Make a way, Lord. I have done everything possible. Oh Lord, I'm at, at, I'm at, at, I am at my wit's end. Lord, help me. Help me, oh Lord. And make a way. Make a way, oh Lord. Put an end to this paralysis in my life. Put an end to this sorrow. Put an end to this pain. Put an end to this agony. This calamity that befalls me every now and then. Father, make a way for me. A way of escape. Make a way, Lord. Make a way. Make a way. Let everything holding me down let me go from now. Lord, make a way for me. In my family, in my marriage, in your church, oh Lord, make a way for us. Out of that challenge, out of that situation, career wise, academic wise, Lord, make a way, Lord, make a way. Health wise, please make a way. Tell him to make a way for you. He will 
May the Lord make a way for you. May the Lord make a way for you. That destiny helper you are trusting God for, may there be a divine connection between you. Ah, that paralysis that seems to have overwhelmed you heard the voice of Jesus and it became a thing of the past. This morning, I call for the name of Jesus. That name that's above every other name. Over there, your situation right now. I say, hear ye the voice of Jesus. Hear ye the name of God. I want us all to shout that name, Jesus, together. I want to go, Jesus. Lord, arise for the sake of your children this morning. Please, oh Lord, hear their petition. That burden that they are carrying that they cannot share with anyone. Father, take it over right now. Take it over right now. Take it over right now. Oh, Father, my God, he say, take it over now in the name of Jesus. Set us free from everything that made us bound. In the name of Jesus. Your word say that the son of man shall set free. From now we clear we are free. From every depression we are free. From every depression we are free. From every ill hell we are free. From every stagnation we are free. From every yoke and body we are free. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I want us to stretch our hands to Pastor. Let's begin to pray.